Hi, everybody. Recruiting Animal here on November the 2nd, 2022. It's a beautiful day. And you know how I know? Because <laughs> I just had to go outside and move my car. And you know why? Because they're shooting some kind of movie on the street. And uh, they put pylons all around it. Someone called me and said, you better move that. But you know what? I don't think I had to. They, but I will go into it. OK, I've had experience that before. We've got people here who don't want to show their faces, but they're my good friends, Travis Yeager, Y-E-A-G-E-R. Travis, you're an IT recruiter. Am I right about that? I can't hear you, as they used to say on Homer uh, Gomer Pyle. I oh, can't yeah. hear you. Okay, what? Well, usually what you hear is, is, is turn down your radio, but. Uh, Are you an IT recruiter? That was my question. Yes. Yeah, I've been called that, I said. Okay. So you're an IT recruiter. You're based in Indiana. Uh, you're looking for uh, work right now. Will you work anywhere in the country on the phone? Um, yeah, actually, I was considering an avenue way out of that uh, space, but uh yeah, no, I'm uh, accepting anything, anything remote. You know, why do you look in the camera? You want, I'm, I'm featuring you, you know, I impress people. David M. Marr, corporate recruiter, just say hi, okay? Everybody Hello. knows you're here. This guy claims that he's outside of Chicago where Ernie is, but he's, he doesn't want to show his face because he said that takes away the bandwidth and you can't hear him. I don't believe you, okay? And neither does uh, Travis. Okay. No. There he is. No, you can't. David and Mark. Okay, I, you know what? I'm not forcing you, but if you want to, I, I don't mind. I like to see the people. <laughs> okay. Okay. I call BS, David. I call BS. <laughs> Here's a question. Here's a question. Starting the show seriously now. Would this be okay to ask? You know, people say it's very hard to assess uh, personality qualities during an interview. And I absolutely agree. How can you know when you're a one hour interview with somebody tops, how can you know what they're really like? So, you know, uh, I was thinking about this question. Uh, do you ever get mad at inanimate objects? Anybody think that's good? Mm. No, I do. <laughs> I, 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 you mean you get mad at them or, or you think it's a good, well, they, good question? Well, when people get mad, they usually are the uh, where the where the anger gets taken get taken out on, like they hit a door, or punch a wall, things like that. So that's not what I mean. Okay, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, like I remember when I was in elementary school. I remember walking up the aisle one day and I bumped into a desk and I felt pure hatred for that desk. And you know what? I'm not much. <laughs> I'm not much different now. Okay, and I think that says something immature about me. Okay, uh, I can't help it. And I'm just wondering if uh, it's a good indicator about, you know, some, anyway, let me move on. Here's another thing. This is just a tip. If you have a coffee in the afternoon, like lots of recruiters do, they, you know, feel tired around two or three o'clock. If you have coffee, the caffeine is still in your body. At bedtime, I read it in the New York Times this morning. It must be true. Okay. And this doctor, uh, he said, if you want a, uh, an energy boost in the middle of the afternoon, stick your head in the freezer. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay. Stick your head in the freezer. He said it gives you a, a jolt of that cold and it arouses your body. It's just like using a, a jumper cable on a, a car. Okay. Uh, David, do you think you're going to try that sometime? Definitely nope. not. Okay, I, I no. like that idea, but you know, pretty it's a beautiful day today. I know it because I went outside, as I said, but <laughs> uh, pretty soon it won't be. Uh, it'll be outside, just like sticking your head in a freezer. Chicago as well, don't tell me uh, it isn't. Okay, here's something else. I was reading LinkedIn and a, a well-known, extremely successful recruiter, he wrote an article against counteroffers. Now, I'm someone who believes that a counteroffer can be good, but he Post, he was saying, no, they're not good. But the model that he used was uh, like cheating on your spouse. If you tell your boss you're taking a new job, it's like you had sex with another partner, okay? And those interviews were your secret meetings in a motel or wherever. And she or he is going to feel betrayed. And they might beg you to stay. And they'll promise you all kinds of things. 
to come back, okay? But if you accept, your boss is never going to forget. And one day, the chickens are going to come home to roost. Uh, what do you think uh, about that, you guys? Any uh, First of all, what do you think about his, uh, his, his allegory or, or something like that, his comparison to cheating? Uh, and do you think uh, what he said, that you're going to pay for it in the end, uh, makes I any think sense? I think you can make an argument either way, to be honest. Uh, in my personal opinion, though, I think that counteroffers are... I advise people not to take counter offers. Why? Just because it's basically buying the company time to backfill you. Why? Um, why? Um, why do you say that? You're taking that point of view. Oh well, yeah. We're just we'll pretend we like you. We'll you well, know because because if you the this, the research that I've read basically is that even if people that take counter offers are leaving the company anyway within six months. Yeah, who made that research? Some recruiter made it up out of his head or her head. It's a self-serving thing for a recruiter to say that. I would never trust a recruiter doing, say, telling me that kind of stuff. It's self-serving. There's a conflict of interest. Oh, no, you don't want to stay at your own company. You want to come to my company so my boss likes me or that I make money of my client. Tom? <laughs> Are you a, a, a counteroffer uh, lover or a hater or what's your take on that? Why would you work for a company that you have to quit before they'll give you a raise? Oh, there it is. If you're making $80,000 and then we offer you 94 and your company's going to offer you 95. Had we not come along and offered you 95, your company would have continued to pay you $80,000 for the next year. Why would you want to work for a company like that? Okay, well, you're a little late, but what if your wife said to you, honey, I'm leaving. Okay. And you said, oh, oh, please stay. Tell me what's wrong and I'll make it better. Does that mean you're not sincere? You're trying to conflate. Uh, Talk into the microphone. Don't make us struggle to hear you. You're trying to conflate uh, love and marriage to a job. And those two things are completely different. They're not even in the same ballpark. Okay, well, somebody disagrees with you because I read it on LinkedIn. And he said, if you tell your boss you're leaving, it's like you had sex with somebody else at a motel, okay? I agree and they with might that. beg you to stay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would never, ever uh, stay in a relationship like that. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, moving on. Uh, what about this one, uh, which may be a little more serious? Do you, uh, do you guys make sure after you've brought your recruit into the company and she's hired that the hiring manager or whoever is responsible has a good onboarding program? So they don't leave the person without a desk. They don't leave the person without a computer. They introduce the person to uh, the other people uh, on the team who are relevant to her. Uh, does anybody actually say, look, I want to know that this is going to work well? Anybody? Dave, you're inside. Do you uh, follow up and make sure? Yeah, that, uh, so so one of the things that I try to do is uh, connect with all of my, my hires, uh, you know, with usually like a 30, 60, 90 cadence just to make sure that they're, they have access to everything. Because a lot of times people start, they're focused on learning their job, but they don't know about the 401k benefits or whatever, right? So So making sure that they are fully engaged and aware of everything that they need for their individual situation. Yeah, yeah, this Tom El Sascio is having an experimental film on the other side of the screen. <laughs> oh, crutches, man. I thought I heard, I thought I heard some boom chicka woo <laughs> Okay, so, so, so you'd follow up with them, but you wait 30 days, that's too late. Okay. Oh, no, because typically there's going through an onboarding process. Oh, that's my point is, are they doing, are they doing the onboarding process correctly? Is that the recruiter's responsibility, responsibility well, the, to make the, sure? Different comp I, I do it just to, to make sure that the candidate is feeling that connection to the company and that, um, again, they have answers to all the questions. Okay. You're not answering the question. I'll ask Ernie. I'll ask Dr. Ernie, okay? <laughs> Ernie, first of all, this guy, David M. Marr, he says he lives in the same little town as you, but if he, if he, uses, his, uh, 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 if he uses his camera, then he loses his uh, audio because they've got such bad uh, um, internet connections uh, on the suburbs of Chicago. Is that true or false? Do you, do, you, do you believe him? I don't believe him. I don't care, but I just want to, you know. Computer. 
I think I think David is just a shy guy. Okay, there, there's a story. Okay, uh, Ernie, you were on the inside in HR. Uh, uh -huh. A recruiter um, uh, should a recruiter, and do you do this? Should a recruiter follow up with a new hire with the company and say, "Look, do you have a very strong uh, onboarding process so this person is well taken care of as soon as she comes into the company on Monday?" Do you take care of that? No, not really. You trust them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, if something happens, shit, they're gonna call me. No, they won't necessarily call you. They'll leave. That's what they'll do. I've heard so many horror stories. Like I said a minute ago, people come in. There's no desk. There's no computer. They're not introduced to anybody. They don't you know, know what they're you doing. Gotta, you gotta stay in your lane. You gotta understand what your job is, and that's the way I look at it. If you start start, you start getting in there involved and all that stuff. They know what they're doing and they and you just got to trust them. But if you know, if if they leave on day one, you still haven't gotten paid unless no, it's retained. day five or day six. I've been here a, a week well, or two well, and they, they haven't got me settled is, in here. I don't like what kind of company am I working for? I'm the, out the of only, here. The, the only issue you have is if they leave and you've already gotten the money. That's <laughs> when you got problems. You gotta take care of it. If you ain't got no money and they leave, you know what? Well, that, that brings I'm me to another question. This guy was complaining, okay? He placed somebody, the person left. So he's got a responsibility to replace that uh, that hire, okay? Well, why did, why did, did he get paid? Yeah. Did he meet his guarantee? Yes, yes, yes. But that's all, part of, that's all part of the game, though. No, 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 no. You didn't let me finish, okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> let me tell you. Okay, <laughs> so what happened? Uh, so... Uh, he's presented some good replacement candidates, but the company now starts uh, doing what he says pivots. They start modifying the job order, the description. He's not getting anywhere, but he owes them a placement. It's not like he can just walk away. He owes them. So, what should he do? So then say, look, I may or may not be able to fill this one, but I'll carry it forward for the next one. Another placement for another position. You don't give any money back. That's not what I'm saying. What I would, would do is say, look, I, I was uh, promised to replace, to fill that position. Now you're giving me another job. <laughs> it's another job and you can't make up what job it is. Okay. I'm not yeah, working on this anymore. Okay. That's what I would tell them. If, if, but the whole thing is you got their money, right? Oh, yeah. But if they're okay, going to be unreasonable. You, you, got their, you got their money. The question is, do you want to give it back? Do I don't mind giving it? money back, okay? okay so I you don't, don't mind want, that. So you don't want to give it back. So then you have... No, you, you I have, do, but if you don't, if you don't... Okay. Now, if you don't, then what you try to do is be creative. That's the whole nature of what we do. So being creative is explain to them why or why you cannot fill this position. Tell them that there's a carryover for a credit going forward. And maybe, and maybe you'll say, I'll give you half... I'll give you half credit for the next two positions so that we fill it. Oh boy, you're very nice. Okay, Tom uh, Pistachio, what's your story on this? I don't, uh, I mean- You once, weren't listening? Once, I, yeah, I was listening. Once my clients um, hire the guy, I, I don't really usually do any type of follow-up other than maybe, you know, six months down the road, shoot him an email of how things He's are on the last question. <laughs> he's, he's, 10 minutes, he's 10 <laughs> minutes back. Okay, Tom, Tom. You, you've got a guarantee that, you know, you're going to refill this position oh, if sorry, the candidate okay. leaves, okay? Your candidate left. You've got an obligation. You've got their money, and the position's empty. But every candidate you uh, present, whom you think uh, uh, they're very good candidates, they're knocking them out because they keep modifying the job. What will you do? So, they get... My, my guarantee says you get a credit that's good, never expires, and can be used on any position. Okay, so you so don't promise to they, refill. You don't promise to refill that job. Not if they change the parameters. If they say to me, "We want you know, hey, this is a sales rep. Now we're doing a VP of sales." Well, okay, fine, but the VP of sales is going to be the fee is going to be thirty grand more. You can use the credit and then pay the difference. Okay, so you're going to say, so "Look, uh, you're driving me get. crazy. I'm not going to work on this job." Next one, I'll do. Okay, anybody else, Travis or David and Mark? We can't hear you. You're on that stinky little phone. Okay, I just want you to know that. Driving me crazy. 
No, you're driving me crazy. me. <laughs> David M. Marr or Travis Yeager, some does the, anybody want to comment on that or, or should we move on? Okay. Some of I'm the contracts uh, that at places I've worked in-house had with agencies was basically um, where like there was a, a, a scaled, so like if, if a candidate didn't get hired in a certain period of time, they had to pay it back, you know, X percent and so forth and so on. Yeah, but we're not, okay, that, to, to, fine, thank you. Okay, what about this, okay? This guy said, I won't say his name, but he's a, he's a hustler. Uh, he's a really strong recruiter. He says, I don't want the best candidate to get the job. I want my candidate to get the job. Is that a good attitude for a recruiter to have? Anybody? <laughs> my job is to make a placement. If the best candidate is not mine, I don't want that other candidate to get it. I want my candidate to get it. Okay, I guess that's, that's a recruiter has sort of a conflict of interest with the client he or she does not want the best candidate to get the job. They want their own candidate. And here's what he said, okay? He said that he, he makes sure that when his candidates go in, they're not winging the uh, conversation in the interview. They, somebody said, I like my uh, candidates just to find out a little about the company and freestyle it, freestyle it. This guy said, no freestyling for me, no freestyling. Okay, I think I think everybody will agree with him. Anybody uh, want to comment? Look how pissed off this guy is looking because he had to use a normal camera. Okay, <laughs> I, uh, I'm very big on, and you're going to make fun of me for this, but help my everybody. Yes, I will. Get they want. I'll get everything I want. I get everything I want. So if, if the best candidate is not mine, I'm okay with it. I, I have no problem with that. I, I, I'm not it, it's it's about making sure my it's, client gets what they want. But it, but it's it's not that it's your, how should I put it? We're not in the business of judging who the best candidate is because we always assume that our candidate is always the best. No, we don't. And, There's no assumption. <laughs> but but <laughs> oh, that's and super that rich talking, mean. okay? <laughs> <laughs> but 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 no no. The, but the part is is if my candidate doesn't get it, I'm disappointed. Okay. Let me add, let me put the question to Super Rich since he came uh, a little late. Super Rich and no assumptions. Okay, if, <laughs> if, if if is this guy said I don't want the best candidate to get the job, I want my candidate to get the job. I, I found that a bit shocking. Would you have the same attitude? Does every recruiter have that attitude? Yeah, I mean, you want your. I mean, listen, you, you theoretically you want what's best for the company, but hopefully you brought the best candidate. I mean, okay, but you might, you might, yeah, but you don't know that uh, theoretically you don't want what's best for the company, uh, for the company. Well, listen, I mean, to me. uh, uh, you're in business to place people, you know, they're doing the interviews. They're doing the whole thing. I think my candidate's a good candidate. Okay. You know? Well, how about this? Let me, I see my, my mind's working a bit slowly. Uh, something really interesting on uh, Ernie ceiling and he's often looking up there. I, I noticed <laughs> that's okay <laughs> with me, Ernie. I don't mind. I, I have, Three monitors that I'm constantly working on. Okay, okay. This I don't mind. I, I just thought it was a little funny. Rich, you're, <laughs> you know, Rich builds good rapports with his his, his clients. So, I mean, they're going to be trusting him as a trusted advisor. He's a, a consultant, right? So they're going to say, Billy's going to say to Rich, Rich, you know what? I don't know what to do. Your candidate has this and he runs a checklist. But this other guy has this. I think he's a little better. What should I do? What's Rich saying to himself? I mean, listen, Don't hire I, that other guy. No way. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I get this a lot where I have a candidate say, like, hey, listen, I got this other candidate that's that's my that's not mine, but I know him. And I'll tell him why I didn't present him, you know, but I won't throw so I won't throw a good candidate under the bus. You know, I want I do want the client to hire the right person. I mean, in all honesty. But, so you'll say, Jim, I think you should go with the other candidate. I'll well, take a hit on this. Okay. Like, like, yeah, I mean, like, I like this. It's a whole long story. I mean, this search was done three times. But the second time, or the third time, they hired um, the, Ernie, they I can do to the final. You're looking at, like, Ernie, you're looking at. The yeah, team? I just want to put you off a bit, okay? What, what's he looking at, okay? <laughs> the, uh, no, I'm, talking God, I'm talking to God. <clears throat> but, I mean, like, the client, he had, like, I had my two guys were in the finals. They were. You know, I thought one and two. He says that he tells me the day before the final, he's like, I got this third candidate. I'm like, well, who is it? He's like, it's not yours. I'm like, I know, who is it? <laughs> so tells me who it is. And I'm like, good luck. 
you know, I'm like, I think the guy is really he's a good rep, but there's a reason I didn't present him because the guy's a flake. He never shows, you know, he he backs out of things. Okay. So he's listen. shooting down the best candidate. Listen, yes. listen, listen. <laughs> so I tell him, I'm like, listen, he's very good. I knew him from this company, this company. I have had an interview over here and here. I even talked to him right before the search. He's a good, he's good. But it, you know, I wouldn't trust him. You know, he's like, so he interviews, they give the guy the job. Oh, yeah. Guy Paul, and this was on a retainer. He apologizes profusely. The hiring manager, even the candidate who he he knows, I know him. He called me and apologized as well. And then <clears throat> three weeks later, first day of work, he he quits. Client calls me. He's like, "How'd you know?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I can show you all the notes. This is what he does." You know. Okay. So okay. I try giving him the right advice. You know? so, but but in that in that scenario, your candidate was the better candidate, right? I always think my candidate's a better candidate. Or I wouldn't send him in because so, he was mentally stable, mm -hmm. not technically, emotionally. Exactly. Okay? So, no, but I mean, you, so, the point so the point it. is, you all you know, I always want to give the right advice to my client, even if it's going to shoot me in the foot today. They'll remember it for tomorrow. It, it's hard, and if it's a if it's you know, fifty fifty. 52, 48, you know, 55, 45, you know, I'm definitely going to push my guy. If it's, you know, one's clearly better than the other. Yeah. All day long. I'll tell the client to go with the better but, choice. But at the end of it, the end of it, the, the, the client has, they make their decision. It's how you react to it. Yeah. That like, matters. well, well, no, no, that's not it. Uh, it hundred percent. And I, I want to, uh, Tommy to to feel free to answer as well. Uh, but here's the thing: is a hiring manager stupid to go to a third party recruiter who's got a conflict of interest and Bingo, ask his Dave. opinion yeah. in the first place? David, a good comment. Do you mean when you say a third party recruiter and a conflict of interest in terms of trying to compare? Yeah, well, yeah you want office. your this. Uh, I gave you the quote at the beginning. Ida, he says, I don't want the best candidate no. to get the job. I want my candidate. Okay. And so the stupid so hiring manager I goes to that guy and says, me. What should I do? <laughs> I just call me and say, Hey, we have two internal candidates. Can you go find us anybody better? And I say, Yes, it costs $5,000. I go out and I'll do the search and I'll bring him what I feel is the best candidate in the market. And then here's your candidate. And how does he compare to your two candidates? I get paid five grand for that. If they hire my candidate, I get 25 grand. So, you know, I have no problem, you know, helping my client choose the best candidate, whether it's internal or external, because I get paid a little bit. But, you know, this is just like the hiring manager who changes the job order. He changes the question. Okay. <laughs> Uh, anybody else? So let me do Thomas, an interview. Thomas, some, Thomas Tricky. Thomas Tricky. Yeah, he's tricky. Uh, okay. So let me introduce the, the people who just joined. Super Rich Rosen, cornerstonesearch.com. He's still number 11 on the best recruiters in America. The, uh, the contest is going to start again, I think, in January. Uh, we'll see what happens in 2023 oh, oh, oh. if he can hold his position or move up. <laughs> Let's okay? get to number 10. Come on. Yeah. Like okay. College rankings. <laughs> Food industry recruiter, Ernie, raise your hand. Show us. Okay. He's in white today. He's pure. And our new friend, <laughs> Thomas Alsacio, like pistachio. Okay. He looks a bit, you know, worn today. Like his, he's a coach at a, a college he's, football. He's got a team. messed up leg. He's got a messed up leg. What happened Double. to you? I had to get um, my meniscus tore at the root, so I had to get uh, meniscus root surgery. So I was at the doctor's this morning getting an ultrasound because they thought I might have had a blood clot. I was in the emergency room last night because I had <laughs> my beat, my blood pressure was one forty over one hundred two. Gavalt. Okay. You know, I had a health issue as well. Just if, since you guys are saying, I got my booster yesterday and I was worried that I wouldn't feel good today. But, you know, it was a Pfizer and the Moderna knocks me out more than It was a Viagra Pfizer. shot, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, what's your website? I'm introducing um, you, Tom. Wake up. PRSearchInc.com. PRSearchInc.com. PRSearchInc.com for Thomas Alsacio. 
Okay. Uh, David M. Marr, uh, I noticed you put up a note when I was asking this question. Was there something you wanted to say? Would you, as an internal recruiter, go to Ernie or Tom or uh, Super Rich and say, look, what should I do? I mean, your candidate's good, but I think this guy's better. <laughs> what would you do? No, Dave? my point My point was that the best candidate is usually one that you can't afford. And um, I, I was just to redefining it saying that it's the best available candidate that you can that you can afford to, or that we never get college. away with this on tv these guys like changing the question on the host they're like politicians they're pretty smart is is uh, travis still here does he want to say anything he agrees with with the best available <laughs> candidate okay 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 what a, <laughs> he agrees with me that's yeah. it yeah. <laughs> Okay, here's here's a, an, a, 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 a phrase I got out of an article on China. Okay, it's a successful country. Uh, and China, it says, has a motto. When labor is free, it's amazing how you can be successful. Okay, okay. well, that's, what, that's, that's the thing. The, the, their motto is taking over on the bend. Okay, I guess that means if you're on a track and... Uh, bending you over if you're... Yeah. Over yeah, there. If you're on the inside. Okay. Okay. Which means surpassing in areas where others have no latent advantage. Okay. And so I'm wondering, does that apply to small recruiters? Can solo recruiters beat out a big company? Uh, do they have an advantage like that, that they can exploit, especially when they're marketing themselves? Oh, I deal with question? you. Know, what was the question? You know, I did such a big setup. I, I guess uh, I know. I it was too long. ADD, recruiters of ADD. It was a big setup. It was too long. Okay. Basically, how are you, how are you doing in China is this question. Yeah. <laughs> the solo recruiter. The solo recruiter. Does he or she have an advantage over a big company that she can sell to a, a, a client? Yes. David Mark, you go ahead. I would say it's your network and specialization and whatever it is that you place. If you're a generalist, it won't work. I think it's like like in Ernie's case, he's he's worked in the food industry and now he can take those working knowledge from that time and his network that he's established in, in the food industry and truly be the food industry recruiter, go to recruiter, basically. So whenever a client or a company needs to hire, you know, the best whatever, I don't know, I don't know what the job titles or Ernie would be, you know, that they would go to Ernie. Okay, that just means a niche, a, a big company can actually have five people work in that niche rather than just one. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same because Ernie would have the relationships and the network already ready to go. Yeah, okay, they don't. I don't think you're right. Super. Well, I mean, <clears throat> but think about it. If you're a solo recruiter, you know, you're doing it all. You know everything. Like this is, it's not, whether it's a good business or not to do it this way, you know, like there's a reason. Like I was just at this conference. I mean, I probably bill more than these eight person offices are doing, you know, not a big firm, but they're, you know, they're all spread out They're even though they're focused, no one's really that focused because eh, they're not really, they're not really, you know, into it. So it's a lifestyle for a lot. Okay, what you're saying, what super rich is saying, look, I work doubly hard as any of the people in any <clears> firm. <throat> okay. Or triple hard. And so, uh, you know, you're getting, I'm a big company, even though I'm only one. Okay, that's what Rich yeah. just said. Okay? I pitch I pitch it as I do it from discovery to invoice. Ask your other client, you know, who's doing the resource? Who's doing you're they're gonna take the call? Who's doing the who who are they passing that information on to? And then so, well, gonna, is yeah. there some problem in hand in the handoffs that you're saying I that uh, why I mean because you're talking to me, I'm gonna do it all. If you're talking to you know to Bill over here, is he doing the rest of the search or is he giving it to Bob? And then who's Bob giving it to? Does he got a lackey under him that just got out of college? So what difference does it make if it's handed <laughs> off? Well, right, can, because now you're getting, you're not, he's getting third hand information. You know, he's getting. Oh, uh, it's like uh, that. Uh, can you still call that game Chinese whispers or broken telephone when you, you know, it's moving on right. one person to another. There's something lost uh, uh, along the, the way. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that's we never call it Chinese whispers, everybody, of course not. Of just course broken telephone. I never yeah. heard of it. I just read it all the time. And it, it comes to mind just in case. Yeah. I mean, okay. so, I mean, <clears throat> at the end of the day, I mean, I think a good solo recruiter or a good small, like, you know, team is going to always outperform. Plus, if you're in a big company, it's, you know, you're, you're just one of many. You know? I'm going to tell you what I think, but I also I, I have attention here. I want to include uh, Tommy, but 
he looks so miserable and he's told us he's he's in pain. So I I I don't want to call on you. I'll leave it to you to Tommy you know, is, come in. Tommy is such more. a quiet guy. He's yeah, he's such a quiet sure. guy. Yeah. <laughs> if you watch the show three weeks ago or whenever he was on the guest, you know he's not. Okay. I, I talk I talk to Tommy every week. Okay. He, He's not quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm sorry for the answer your calls. I was in the doctor's office when you called. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, so I'll just leave it to you to come in. I, I like to include everybody, but, you know, some people don't want to be included. What was I saying? I was going to rebut uh, what Super Rich said. Can't You're remember. talking about Rich, uh, big recruiter versus little recruiter. And, no, he was talking about handing it off to, yeah, to lots of off. people. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, one thing you could say, look, I'm a solo a lackey, recruiter. A I don't lackey. have a million clients. I am much more devoted to my clients well, than some big company that's got 50 clients, okay? You know, pitch, it, it, the, well, it, the, the pitch is always, I, you know, I only take on what I can close. You know, big companies, they may take, they'll take a ton of things on. Maybe they close it, maybe they don't. What do they care? You know, and the, and the other thing, it depends on just the recruiter. I mean, you can belong to a big company, a little company. It's all about the recruiter and what they do. They, You can go, Rich can go to another company. They don't even know the name of his company. All they know is he's Rich. He's Tom. He's Dave. He's Ernie. Yep. That's all they know. Yeah. And then, and then all it takes is for an HR person that takes over a company that's one of your clients to have their own set of recruiters that they work with. <clears throat> then you're out. I, so, I don't follow. I don't follow what you're saying, but I'm sure it makes sense. Or any, uh, it, all, all of these guys. I was looking at the ceiling. Sorry. Well, okay. I'm talking to, I'm talking it's to God. To me several times. No, I agree. 100. percent It's happened to me several times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, has anybody ever had to do? That's a good question. I didn't plan, but you you you've got a good client. All of a sudden, they bring in a new VPHR. He or she wants to kick you out. It do never happens. A, Come on. Do you fight back? Is there a way to fight back and say, listen, surely you're making a mistake. You know who I am? I'm Ernie. Okay. I'm super rich. I'm Tommy. You don't want to, you don't want to play the animal me. clip in the back for him. But yeah. you, but you, you have to assume that the, the new HR person or that new internal recruiter that they hired knows what they're doing. And a lot of times they don't. Usually. Okay. Usually so how do you press back come? and say, well, okay. usually, usually they want to come in, they want to cut budget, look like they did something useful, you know, so you got to, you got to get them on your side and say, listen, I understand this is your, you know, the MO, you want to cut budget, you want to say recruiters are useless, blah, 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 you know, <clears throat> then you have to pitch them on the fact that, you know, listen, this is why we've been successful. Here's the track record at the company we've done for you. Look how many candidates we've sent. Look how many they've got in place. Look at the results they brought, you know, once they're in place. You know, you got to kind of fight back, give them a little reason why they shouldn't do fight you because it's just like a cold call. First thing they're going to say is no. Recruiters, forget them. You know? Have you ever successfully done that? Turn someone around? Yeah. Have you ever done it when they don't just want to get rid of recruiters? Like Ernie said, they've got their own pet recruiter. Yeah. I mean, listen, you just, you're going to, you're not going to run every battle. If they got their own favorite, great. But, you know, you try to tell, you try to pitch it along the lines of, hey, well, is this guy great all over the place? I mean, is it really, does he happen to have the same market? I'm like, for me, I tell him, listen, I place a thousand salespeople. I tend to doubt he's placed a thousand salespeople in your niche. He doesn't build this company and that company and that company. Um, I'm like, listen, having two great recruiters working on something is only going to help you, you know? You know, and, and a lot of times too, where it's important to have your connections with the, uh, the higher ups, like the president or the VPs, so that you have that at least that connection. And sometimes they will bypass HR or the internal recruiter and come directly to you. It, it's it's pretty funny though. I mean, you you were in this, these HR roles, HR roles now, senior HR people have so much freaking power at some of these companies. It's crazy. Like a lot of these VPs, I I run into this now a lot. A lot of hiring managers, these you know you know VPs of sales, they are absolutely horrified of conflict they don't want to fight with their ceo for the candidate they want they don't want to fight with hr because they're worried about getting sued over any dumb thing under the sun i don't even know why they don't want to fight with hr but they don't they you know they they're just so afraid to actually put their neck out for anything that's i find right now the biggest problem in this new market we're in okay but do you ever actually say Shirley, you're going to be, if you lose me if you get rid of me you're going to be sorry okay you're going to kind just of just like that those words. To me what? Right, Tom used those words too, right? 
<laughs> Tom actually said, I want to know. You're going to be sorry. I just want to tell you. You'll be sorry. Is everybody back? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's excited. But yeah. you can't, you got you to tone the way Tom says things because he's a former bartender. Yeah. Those are, <laughs> the, old, the old bartender ways come out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, and, well, I mean you gotta, it's a sales call at that point. You got to be salesy. You can't say you're fucked without me. No, no, that that's <laughs> one way to do it. Uh, or, or, see, you this can't. is where to say go fuck off. I mean, this is where I don't understand. I, I, this is I, I, the, I'm like, I figure Super Rich would be the guy to say you're fucked without me, and you're gonna come running back, well, I mean, and I, I'm gonna I, take I, you I back. A, but he says I had no. A situation like years ago, long, long time ago, the client I pulled all these people out of this company, <clears throat> and. This HR person called and said, hey, listen, you got to stop taking people out of our company. And I was like, great, send me a check, you know? And, you know, if you want to send me a monthly check, I'll stop. And then she's like, well, how about you refill them all? And it was it was a great company. They, these guys are all vested, so there was just time to go. So, you know, we refilled everyone. It was like my first huge client, like becoming, it became a huge uh, client for me. And actually, it was really the base of like my entire career success, to be honest with you, because all those guys I still work with 20 years later, 25 years later um so but that's what happened i you know she was like you know you can't don't call our people and i said well give me money so i ended up just replacing everyone and more wow that's quite a story but you you've yeah. never done it again no i have I've done it plenty of times actually it's funny because in the company a lot of these guys went to was tableau which was like a huge climb i placed like 60 some odd people there and when they were young and then they brought in new hr people and the exact thing you're saying they're like hey you know, we don't want to use recruiters anymore. I'm like, I understand that, but we've done really well. And, you know, I can, I forget what my exact wording was back then, but it's like, we've done really well for you. It'd be a shame, you know, <clears throat> you know, just listen, when you get stuck on these searches, which you will, because I know where your hiring managers want to hire and it's fucking hard. They're super particular. This is why they keep using me. And then they kept using me. I got a song. I bet this about come back when you grow up, girl. You can start singing that song. You're still living in a paper doll world. You could have been a woman. Right. <laughs> I won't go on. I want to welcome our own Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot of Serbia, Stanislava Tesanovic. We know her as Sasha. She's Tasha's Tesanovic. And she's even got her. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, did anybody else want to get in on that, on turning around the HR people who want to kick you out? You know, you, you also got to know where you, you're spending your time and not wasting your time. And sometimes you just move on. There you go. That's the secret to making money. Thank you. I'm not Mama gonna said, knock you out. Go ahead. What? I'm not going to waste my time if you don't want to work with me anymore. Yeah. You're either a source or you're a client. End of yeah. story. You don't want to well, be, you'd actually tell somebody that? Well, Would you actually say that, that threat? Uh, uh, if they tell me we aren't going to use you anymore and there's nothing I can do to turn them, then I got to be fine. You're either a sort, you're a client. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. It's like you know, old, old school MRI talking, but it's right. You know I mean, what? What do you got Some to lose? Some people, I just want to, yeah, just so sorry, yeah. People are sometimes saying that this is a boys club. The recruiting animal show isn't uh, hospitable to women. I want to ask Sasha, is there something wrong with us? You're not afraid. No, there's nothing wrong with you. I survived my first show, so I'm here. <laughs> okay. I just want to, because I don't understand it. Okay. Like, I, I just really don't. Okay. I like what Tom said. I like what Tom said. I just want to go on the record for that okay i like those tough guys okay he's a bartender he's a bartender oh they're they're supposed to be likable okay not tough necessarily no, or sometimes they bring out the baseball bat the or the shotgun. they'll be okay. nice to you okay okay well you know here's another follow-up question which i actually read uh, these uh recruiters uh, corporate recruiters saying hire, hiring managers are turning into bullies over the last few years okay uh and, and it was because this recruiter she had a lot of work backed up, a corporate recruiter, and she didn't get a job posted as fast as the hiring manager wanted it. And so he didn't go to her boss. He went to the CHRO, the chief uh, human resources officer, and complained about this recruiter. And she said she was uh, on the verge of tears and she hated her life. Uh, and so this other person said, it's like that now. They are meaner the the hiring managers is that true uh yeah 
Anybody? Yeah, well, they think they're in power now. They think that they 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 they, re- they think there's, there's this giant glut of candidates out there, and there still is not. There's a giant glut of bad candidates and some good candidates, more so than there were a few months ago. But we're still in a massive labor shortage. Like there's all these articles that every you know that are just predicting the next ten years, despite what happens with the economy, we're still going to be in negative unemployment. You know? Yeah, you know what? I, I don't know why. <laughs> You don't know why what? Everybody's freaking out about this because baby boomers are retiring in droves. Nobody had kids to replace them. It's insane to think that, oh, is it every See, little uh, bump about, in the right economy. It, it is. It's, never, it's not going to happen. We, we have the largest group of baby boomers in the next three years are turning 65, 66, 67 and start retiring. And COVID accelerated that. So now you're going to have this huge all these openings and we're not going to have enough people to fill them so in some industries yeah tech in some areas over hired but in general no i don't see any so how can these vps of hr hire. and i got ernie here who was a vp of hr okay how could they be so uh separated uh you know like delusional they have no sense of uh the market what's going on okay ernie you first then david m Marr, who's on the inside and has to deal with these people i assume more than we do <laughs> well i would say that they think they're you know they, they're when when you're in that role everyone's kissing your ass okay they're bringing you coffee they're doing all kinds of stuff when you're out of that role they don't do that anymore of course but they think they, they're they God's gift and everybody says they're so smart and everything else like that. So when it comes to like this, they want to know why you ain't doing your job. It's easy. But number one, I can tell you, when I was in that role, I had no idea what recruiting was. And when people tell me when they're, when they're in HR, and not the recruiting part of it, but just HR, and they said, yeah, I know, I know recruiting, I'm in the HR. And I teach them, I tell them, you know what, I'm going to take you to the dark side. And I'm going to show you what we do and how we do it. And they go, I never knew we, I never knew any of this. And, and, and it's just, they just know a little sliver of posting and praying. That's it. Interviewing. And, and, and it's a different okay. world. So what, what I th- you know, what this, uh, uh, David, I'll get to you, but this tells me, you know, when I have been rebuffed in the past by some hiring manager who says he wants to go to a bigger company, I, I, I think I should tell them based on what Ernie just said, hey, you know what? You are delusional. You don't know what's going on out there. I do, okay? But a, anyway. a, a, but a, a lot of that too is when they, uh, somebody says, I want to go to a bigger company. It's not, it, it all has to do with your salary. You could be, you could have a good salary in a small company and you carry a lot of weight. Or you can have a great salary. You're talking about something else. I'm talking about using me as a solo recruiter as opposed to, you know, X company that's got 50 people. That we were talking about that before. If your memory, you know, he's talking about people who were retiring. You're not there yet, Ernie. Okay. Don't (laughs) use that excuse. (laughs) My memory's going. I can't remember what you said 10 minutes ago. But, but I mean, no, 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 you lost your chance. David M. David M. Marr. (laughs) <laughs> okay, these VPs of HR, are they meaner than they used to be? And are they as stupid or, or as removed from reality as... Uh, as so I, so I work, it, I've worked in larger uh, environments. So I would say that it depends on the industry. Um, in some industries I've worked in recently, I would say that the caliber and the, the uh, leaders were better than others. Uh, but in, cer- in certain industries, uh, like retail, for example... Um, I don't think, I think agency using an agency would be to their advantage because they don't, they don't understand just as, just as Rich said, they don't understand all that goes into recruiting and they don't value their own in-house recruiters. And they basically set them up in such a way where they're just posting and praying and have very little, very little support and structure. And they pretty much are fighting an uphill battle to fill their positions. Okay, David, you didn't David, say if they're let, me, let me ask David a question. David, you're an internal recruiter. You've yes. been doing this a long time with various companies. Yes. Given your present company, are your hiring managers more hey, stupid? You want to get the guy fired? Are, are your hiring managers there? more stupid than your past ones? 
I would say no. I would say no. I would say. The, the, you the better say no. Nobody watches the show anyway. That is though. Correct. It doesn't matter. The hiring managers <laughs> and my current employer are definitely more intelligent. They're probably the smartest <laughs> people in the world. Here, there you go, man. <laughs> That's worth five thousand dollars extra a year. Some of the best. <laughs> Let me get to Sasha, just so people, you know, well, we're bad men and we're talking over her and squeezing her up <laughs> that conversation. I got to tell you, I mean, whenever I see I mean complaining about men, I think, which man is she talking about? Sasha, do you have anything you want to contribute here? You don't have to. I'm just giving you a chance. I want everyone to know that I hey, am. Hey, let, woke, her talk, okay? let her talk. Let her talk. Okay. Well, I'm in a position of HR, right? And we are using services of a big corporation when it comes to recruiting. But I do have to admit that when I started participating in this show, my eyes were completely open when it comes to recruiting. The scales yeah. fell off. Go ahead, Sorry. Exactly. So the thing is that uh, right now I'm in a similar position, meaning that uh, one of the uh, recruiters that we hired to uh, find us or to fill a certain positions uh, is not getting back to us and uh, it's more than two weeks. So I would like to, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely going to reach out to his manager because I really think that it's uh, unacceptable to wait uh, for more than two weeks on uh, candidate replacement. Uh, and because it fell under the warranty period, the guy just- We, got, we understand, okay? We're not stupid, okay? We got it. So okay. yeah, what uh, you, you're, they got you over a barrel. They owe you, they, they got your money already, right? The only uh, uh, power you have is not using them again if they don't come through for you. Am I right, everybody, about that? She can't do anything, yeah. right? Nobody yeah. wants to comment. You know, I got to tell you. the whole story. So she, they place somebody, it fell off uh, and they have to replace the person and they're not getting back to her. They got her money and then forget about and it. And then ignoring emails. Yeah, yeah, and I'd like to reach out to his direct manager. Well, yeah. find find the person out. Go ahead. Uh, how, how, you, how big a company are you going after that, that owes you the money that you gave money to? How big? Yeah. Uh, it's a deco. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah, you got to go to their accounts receivable. You got to call their, I would just start up high, call their CEO. Who cares? I mean, yeah. it's easily. You're not going to get through to the CEO over this little uh, placement. Uh, well, maybe I have two placements. Yeah. Yeah. Well, seriously, why not? Anybody else want to take a shot at this? Yeah. Or, no? or call uh, Wilson Cole. He does, works on contingency. So yeah, she's in Serbia. Okay. Uh, Doesn't matter. Nonetheless, I use, I work for U.S. company. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I forgot. Well, uh, at uh, least yeah. I can try. I mean, uh, it. I realize oh, you so call Wilson, things. you mentioned my name, he'll take care of you. He's a good guy. He's a very good guy. Yeah. But that'll cost her more money. It will not, it will, but she's got nothing now and let's, you're not going to sue her. How much do they it's owe It's only you? been two weeks. Oh, still, I don't care. No no phone calls, I lose patience and who Not only no phone calls, no replies to her messages. Yeah. So you got to send them an email, send them an email right now or a text even and say, listen, if I don't hear from you by the end of the day, I got to give this over to legal because I can't go two weeks with no, 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 no communication. I like That's the way you said I'm giving it to legal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That sounds serious. You know what? I didn't realize the show has gone so fast. It's almost over. I copied some rich material, like mm. not that it was just, it's rich to, it was good stuff, but it was put up by rich and I wanted to talk about it. If you showed up today, I, showed and up I, can't, today. I can't raise it now. It's, it's uh. almost one o'clock. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll save it for uh, another time. Uh, whoa, uh, let me see if there's any, anybody else got an issue, a final issue they want to talk about? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have, a, I have a final issue that I found this kind of interesting. I don't think we've ever asked this question before. How much time do you spend on a daily or weekly basis finding contact information? Anybody want to take that on? I give it to uh, my admin to do. So, yeah, so, I know. He's got the answer is get an outsource, outsource it to, to somebody no, else. So, and, so this is something that I, 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 know a lot. I do this on a daily basis. There's a myriad of tools out there now that literally can find it all for you. Um, Seconds. In some cases, yeah. it's a matter of 
like they find so much information sometimes that you have to like validate the emails to make sure that you're finding or using the latest and greatest one. Cause I know like, for example, myself, I have like 50 emails and I have different emails for different purposes. So. So what's the latest and greatest one? Uh, you, know, go I, I, <laughs> you can't tell us. No, I'm not. <laughs> You won't different tell different us. Different You're cheating us from that information. We no, probably know about it already. Important. Anyway, he's just he's just poking fun at me. I I would do the same. <laughs> Why? I don't know what the big deal is. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. All, well, all we know we it. know them all. Uh, SQL, uh, yeah. uh, Chatterworks, uh, Lucia. Yeah. You know, check Easy out Hire. Sales, we check know out them sales, all. QL, Rocket Reach, yeah. um, Hire Easy, uh, Lucia, uh, Swordfish. Is Lucia still good? Yeah, I find it. I, I think it goes in spurts, but it's good. They all go in spurts. None of them are great. Yeah, like you, that I, I, I just asked Dean DeCosta this question the other day, just trying because I was looking for something. And, you know, I so said, I'm using all the basic, all the same crap we we're all using. And he said, Nymeria and Seekout. You know, he was I into uh, Nymeria when they first came yeah. out and then they went off the market. Yeah, Sasha exactly. speaking. Sasha speaking. Go ahead, Sasha. Yep, I had a demo with Seek Out. Uh, somebody, I believe, a previous show, one of the previous show, recommended uh, Seek Out company, and they're amazing. Yeah, I, I'm in love with them. Yep. I recommended Seek Out to you, Sasha. Is it act? I mean, is how? Yeah. What's the accuracy like? Is, is it, it, yeah. It, was it David or Gavin? I, I did. Yeah. The question was, if you had extra two thousand dollars, where would you uh, so, have? But but more uh, wait, hang on, hang on, Ernie, hang on. But more importantly, what what's the accuracy though? Like they all like they all it seek out the same seventy percent. I don't care about all the other features. I'm looking. I'm actually doing a, a demo of Seek Out on Friday because I, I haven't looked at them in years. Is Seek Out better than Swordfish? I, I, Swordfish. Yeah, I know. Swordfish is probably the most good accurate. As, um, it's really good at returning uh, cellular information. Seek Out is or Swordfish. Swordfish. Yeah, seek yeah. out. Seek out would be one I would recommend if you had multiple issues you were trying to solve in a tool. But if you just want like contact mm -hmm. information, uh, high level of accuracy, no single tool though. I don't care what they tell salespeople tell you has one hundred percent accuracy. You got to have like what Super Rich says all the time. But yeah, let me. What, what do you mean by them. multiple issues? What's that? Multiple issues. Like if you want to manage your source, like you want it, like you don't have a LinkedIn recruiter license, and you want to be able to sort source uh candidates based on you know projects and be able to still get access to those oh, okay those you want to do all your sources you want to do, you want to do all your well, sources. well it's not just that it also does um your drip campaigns it does your um you know diversity focused type searches that you may have to do and okay. it covers pretty much a very broad range of industries if you just do tech it's there's another one cost called, zoom in too. It's, it's good, uh, it's i think good. it's like 3500 I think I think uh, uh, seek out is like thirty five hundred dollars a seat. Hey Dave, let me ask you this: If you were doing this on your own, would you pay for it? I would. Okay. Okay, that's great. Uh -huh. We we finished on a high note. I want to introduce everybody again: FoodIndustryRecruiter.com, Ernie Marino, PRSearchInc.com. Is that correct, Tommy? Right. Thomas Alsacio, like Can I make a quick comment before you move on? What? Quick comment before you move on. Seek out. Oh, yeah. Quick comment before you move on. Seek out's really good, but the most bang for your buck for, for good accuracy is sales QL. It's $39 for 1,500 lookups, and I get just as good an accuracy as, and I've demoed it against Seek out. You're getting phone uh, numbers in, or you're getting phone numbers or emails? Phone numbers, both cell and regular, and email, both personal and work. Interesting. And you're doing what's that? Which one's sales? What is it? Sales SQL? Sales SQL. Thirty nine dollars for sixteen hundred lookups. And I yeah, just, uh, hang, hang on. Again, your, listen, Tom. Your, your phone sucks. What's what's the name of it? Sales QL. Sales QL. And it's a very good. It's on the, it's on the chat. Good. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah, I'm doing tech support on the other line here too. So, but any event, it is you know, it is worth the best now. for me in terms of um, <laughs> cost for you know like. I, I compared it to a Zoom info. I did the Zoom info for a week and sales quill was just as good at or sales QL was just as good as Zoom info. And it does get cell phone numbers and it gets personal emails. Yeah. No, it's good. I, I'm looking at it. Apparently well, too. But however, yeah. some of the contact info is uh, not relevant, is outdated for uh, some of oh, the That's all content. of them, yeah. 
The thing yeah, that I all. love with Sika, for instance, is that you can uh, type in in a search bar specific position that you're looking to hire for. Uh, what is the area? What are your What are the specifics that you're looking uh, to find in a person? And boom, you're going to get a list of so many people and i was like shocked i couldn't even get one applicant in a specific i mean in the city of pittsburgh for the certain position and over here i had a list of 350 people who are uh familiar with with the specific uh a software app that we're using so it's amazing do you not use sales navigator or um recruiter yeah. off linkedin See, that's, I use LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's only 99 bucks a month. And it's the same thing you said. And then I put Sales Quill, use Sales QL to get the numbers. So it's a two-step process where I feel like you could completely get rid of LinkedIn if you used Seekout. I, I agree with you. Seekout's very good. But I get the same results with Seekout. I mean, I'm sorry. I get the same results with LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Sales QL. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a cheaper option because the uh, they offered me and I'm not sure how their price pricing goes, but I told them that I would be the single user and they told me that they're charging uh, $4,500 uh, annual, on an annual basis. Uh, and yeah, I got 4000 on annual too. Yeah, that's what they told me. Yeah, and they're restricting you uh, to 500 contacts uh, per month. Okay, and David M. Marr said that he would take uh, Seekout, I think it was, over LinkedIn Recruiter any day. Didn't you say that, David M. Marr? Yes. I mean, I don't even have LinkedIn Recruiter, so you don't need it. But it, does uh, everyone here have any sales navigator? No, she said she doesn't. I haven't used any LinkedIn products in over five years now. Oh, I, really? I wish I could say that. <laughs> okay, so just so everybody knows, everything from Canada costs 30% more. <laughs> <laughs> blows me away it's 30 percent more for us okay it's so food industry country. recruiter cornerstonesearch.com raise your hand number 11 raise your hand rich okay he's in All another right. world Doing too okay. many things. <laughs> sasha the only woman here our favorite okay regular tommy alsacio <laughs> i said a pr search inc david mr Travis Yeager, Y-E-A-G-E-R-I-T recruiter extraordinaire. And that's it. Thanks, everybody. It went way better than you, you guys don't know. I had to run out and move my car before the show started. Bye-bye. <laughs>